Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked on Wolves. Today on the show, it's the post-game podcast from Las Vegas Summer League, game number two. The Timberwolves may have lost, but the two players we're all most excited to see, Josh Minot and Leonard Miller, both impressed once again. Plus, who else popped for the Wolves in this game? What was most impressive to me throughout this one is it was kind of a back-and-forth affair with lots of Timberwolves highlights. We'll break it all down on the show. Welcome in. You are Locked on Wolves. You are Locked on Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. Happy Tuesday everybody and a big thank you for making locked on wolves your first listen every day of course this show is free and available everywhere including youtube and wherever you listen to podcasts you can also watch the show on the lockdown sports minnesota app on both roku and amazon fire tv and of course also follow on twitter at lockdown t wolves and also at my account which is at b beacon that's with two b's two e's ck e at all right, Timberwolves played game number two in Las Vegas Summer League. They won back on Friday, Monday show. We did a bit of a post-game pod, kind of talking about high points from Friday. Today, though, uh, almost more of a full post-game pod. I want to, I want to, we're not going to do it the exact same way, but I do want to dive more specifically into a few player performances. And I want to start with Josh Minot and Leonard Miller, because those are the kind of the headliners of Summer League for the Wolves. And they also were the best players on the floor. But there were a couple of other players that I had not really seen play much before, maybe didn't do as much in game one, but were really impressive in game two. So we'll talk about those guys later. I've got uh, three names I'm going to mention, but but one that I was really impressed with, uh, somebody who could make a run at, at, I don't know if it's a two-way deal or be a prominent member on the Iowa Wolves this year, but we'll get to that here in a minute. Let's start with the guys that we all came to see, I should also point out that Wendell Moore Jr. was a late scratch. Knee soreness is what the team said. Uh, so he did not play in this game. Um, so no Wendell Moore Jr. The only first round pick on this roster, right? He was the Wolves first round pick last year or the Wolves, I should say, acquired him on draft night as a first round pick last year in 2022. Instead, last year's 2022 second round pick, uh, Josh Minot. And then this year's first second round pick, the number 33 pick Leonard Miller both starred in this game. Let's start with Minot because he's the one I think he's got a leg up simply because he's a year. we got a year more of experience. Like they both were in the G league last year, right? Obviously Leonard Miller played exclusively in the G league. Minot had a handful of, uh, of NBA games under his belt, but Minot, I think is I've said this before the number 11 guy in the depth chart for the wolves. And he's got a real shot at getting rotation minutes especially now that Torian Prince isn't around. And I, I know that Torian Prince's role was essentially backfilled by some combination of Troy Brown Jr. And um, I guess to kill Alexander Walker in terms of players that are back with the team or, well, you know, Troy Brown Jr. being new at the team and and uh, Alexander Walker being back. But Josh Mine, it's the closest thing to that type of a role in terms of a bigger bodied kind of backup four slash three. Um, Josh Minot was fantastic in this game. The Timberwolves started with a set play where it was, I believe there, I believe there were two screens. I think it was kind of almost like double drag screens. And then Minot uh, essentially slipped the screen. He didn't actually set it and headed to the basket, threw down an alley-oop over the, the defender actually caught up and played it pretty well. Nice pass, by the way, from Brandon Williams, um, the, the starting point guard who had a, a really strong first game and a decent second game too. We'll talk a little bit more about him. A nice pass just over the hand of the defender and great concentration and athleticism for Josh Minot and length, of course, to grab it and throw it through. He had another dunk pretty early on too off of a nice pass. I forget who dished it to him, but um, it was a nice little kind of little cut to get him to the middle of the paint and then a dunk. There was another instance where he slipped the screen. I think he completed an alley-oop on that player. Maybe it was just a lob that he came down with and then converted. There was a, a rim run or two in transition. There were a couple of other plays where he set a screen, rolled, didn't have the spacing wasn't quite right, or there wasn't a lane to get the pass. And so he faded into the dunker spot. It just it's the type of off ball feel that is the absolute calling card for what Josh Minot needs to do to be an NBA regular. Um 
that type of a play, and it's a it's a minor thing, a seemingly minor thing, but to feel like, okay, the traffic is too much here. I have to get myself into an advantageous spot to just fade into the dunker spot, make yourself available, get the ball. And I think on the particular play I'm thinking of, he actually kind of missed the double clutch layup, but came down with the rebound, went back up and got fouled and got to the free throw line. This was early in the game. Um, I, I was very, very impressed with the feel that Josh Bynett showed in this game because that was kind of the book on him coming out of Memphis is he didn't have that because he was a lot of times coming off the bench, kind of a raw younger player didn't play a lot in the NBA last year. The question was how would he function off the ball? Would he find this role? And he played that like athletic, um, really kind of just a role, big position. Like he, he effectively is a power forward. Right. But I think, I think he's got enough other tools that he could play the three, um, in, in some instances at the NBA level, but he was just kind of this role big that like knew how to set a screen and roll. And it was very comfortable. In fact, more comfortable. It seemed like slipping screens. Um, the jump shot is still a work in progress. And in this particular game, he was over three outside the arc. He ended up shooting just eight of 18. In fact, later in the game, he got into a little bit of trouble, putting the ball on the floor. He tried to, to do a little bit too much, had some turnovers, dribbled into a couple double teams into traffic. And it was actually, it was almost the perfect performance in terms of validating everything that I've been saying about Josh Bynett, which is he is an NBA rotation player. Now the do stuff ability, his, and you guys are going to sick of me saying that because I'm talking about, I, I coined this do stuff ability term and I won't stop using it now because it's so important. It's so much of what the wolves were lacking last year. And Josh Bynett does all of those things. He had a couple of really nice rebounds in this game too. He finished with six total, but there was uh, one in particular that was really impressive early in the game, a defensive rebound kind of in traffic, went up and pulled it down. Just the activity level, the nose for the ball, the athleticism, the length, the ability to run the floor to, he had a couple nice block shots. Um, one really impressive one, but he had two in the game. Everything that you want to see from him. But then when, when he got the ball in his hands and was asked, I don't think he was asked to do too much. I think he was just kind of feeling himself a little bit, played really well in the first half. The second half, the Wolves were trying to come back. He tried to do a little too much, got himself into some trouble. Um, he only had two turnovers on the game. But a player like Josh Bynett has to have zero or one turnovers almost every night, right? Um, that was one of the issues with Jared Vanderbilt is he was in a similar like lower usage offensive role, but he had bad hands. So he was turning over once a game just because he couldn't catch the ball. He wasn't usually trying to do too much. Minot needs to like, I think the ceiling for Josh Minot is still higher than Jared Vanderbilt. And Jared Vanderbilt is a rotation player on a good playoff team. Like that's the role that Vando plays now. Minot, I think, has a higher ceiling because he's got some other skills that Vando hasn't quite developed. Obviously, the jumper, some scoring touch, things like that. Um, but he has to be able to fit that role offensively where he doesn't get out over his skis too much. And he just kind of plays the role and doesn't try to do too much. Now, summer league is the time to allow yourself to try and do a little bit more. And the wolves I'm sure have encouraged that, but he needs to play that kind of eighth, ninth, 10th man role where he's probably only at 10 minutes a run at first. If that, if he's in the rotation at all, and he's got to just make an impact, he's got to get out there, defend point of attack, uh, crash the glass on both ends of the floor, get to the dunker spot, make yourself available, catch a couple lobs, knock down an open three. If he gets the opportunity, don't do too much. And this was the perfect example, a microcosm of what I'd expect from Josh Minot. 30 minutes, 19 points on 18 shots. So a little inefficient when he got a little bit, uh, kind of when he's feeling himself a little bit, in the second half, six rebounds, two blocks, two assists, two turnovers. But I was very impressed with Josh Minot, especially early in this game. Next segment, I want to talk all about Leonard Miller. Uh, he did a little bit of everything in this game, so I want to spend a lot of time on him, and then we'll close with some of the other players that really impressed me in this game, other notables. So we'll do all that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends over at Ibotta. It's officially summer, and a new season means new clothes. But your closet shouldn't be the only thing growing when you make those purchases. Now you can also watch your cash back grow with each purchase that's with Ibotta. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or you could use your cash back to buy that flight that you've been eyeing, the game you're dying to go to, or the fancy dinner 
you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers, too, when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKED when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code LOCKED. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Player App Store and use the code LOCKED. A big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow on the show, I'm actually, it's a bit of a Lockdown crossover. I talked with Kane Pittman over at Lockdown Bucks. He wanted to talk a little bit about Malik Beasley. We had a nice conversation. I talk, I gave him kind of some general thoughts on the Wolves. And apparently the Bucks, Bucks fans, I guess, think the Wolves might trade the Mike Conley. So we talked a little bit about that. I'm just going to air that conversation as part of the show on Wednesday. I also want to do some overarching Summer League takeaways uh, so we'll do both of those things on Wednesday's show. So stay tuned for that. And then, of course, the rest of the week, the Wolves play their next summer league game on Wednesday. So we'll do a post game pod Thursday and, uh, you know, kind of keep going on this, uh, the Vegas theme here for the next week or so for the most part. So stay tuned throughout the week. A big thank you again. If you do make Lockdown Wolves your first listen every single day. All right. Let's talk about Leonard Miller. Uh, he, again, did it all. And did not disappoint at all. He played 31 minutes in this game, 20 points, 7 of 15 shooting, so a bit more efficient than mine at 2 of 4 outside the arc, 4 of 5 at the line, 5 rebounds, 3 steals, 2 assists. He did have 3 turnovers in this game. Um, He really did it all. Like, that's kind of the MO for Leonard Miller. That's what the scouting report, that's what the prospect profile says for Leonard Miller is he does basically everything. He needs to work on the jumper, but he does everything else. And we saw it all in this game. I thought for the most part, he made good decisions with the ball in his hands. He actually didn't, wasn't super involved the first few minutes of the game. And then he finally got a touch along the left baseline. It was almost like he said, you know what? Screw it. I got to do something. I finally got a touch. He had a tough turnaround baseline jumper. Not a good shot. Not like it was like an isolation turnaround jumper. It's like Kevin Garnett basically is what it looked like. And uh, it went in. Um, and then from that point forward, it was like he was ultra confident. Uh, he confident when he's shooting it, even if it's not the prettiest stroke and it's not, and he does this weird, like heels click thing when he shoots kind of hoists it up, but again, seven to 15 and two of four outside the arc, there was one ill-advised deep three pointer late in the game, uh, when the wolves were trying to catch up. But besides that, I thought the shot selection was pretty good for Leonard Miller. The shot is clearly very, he's very confident in his jumper. He also was pretty aggressive going into the paint, got an and one opportunity, talked a little trash after that. He had one where he got fouled going to the rack and it was, I think it was in transition and he really, it would have been nice to see him try and throw it down. He tried to lay it up, got fouled. I think he hit both free throws in that instance, but um, overall aggressive, putting the ball on the floor and like as advertised, I mean, it really was like just watching. He reminds me of just, I don't know. I don't know that there's like a single player comp, but just like a combo forward, if you will, who does everything. He's almost up. I know we've, we've thrown around the term point forward for him. He's not really going to initiate offense this year. Maybe he will in Iowa. I'm not sure. Um, but he's got that capability and he could do everything. He can knock down a three. He can get into the mid range. He can get all the way to the basket. He can get fouled and make free throws. Um, he could distribute. He could dribble with both hands. He could play in the post. He had a couple of post up opportunities. Um, defensively though, is actually where I was a little bit more impressed by him. And I know he did this a little in game one. He had a couple of nice rotations, forcing turnovers where he was like the low man and stepped up in the right opportunity forced some tough shots under the basket. He did that again in this game. Um, he had some really good rotations. There's one play in particular. It was in the first half. Um, and the jazz were about to get, somebody was like right under the rim and whoever the other wolves defender was, was a little bit out of position. And Miller came seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, came off of his guy in the corner and doubled the jazz player at the rim. And the, and he turned around and was so surprised that he just lost the ball. He just dropped it. And just a really good wall up by Miller. The Just the, again, I go back to feel. Like I was talking about with Minot on offense. The feel, the knowledge to be in the right place at the right time defensively, the right rotation, so rare last season for the Wolves. And I know defensively they were good, but we were still missing that. Like, that's still something that like Nas Reed struggles with sometimes. And 
um, like at times Vando did even too. those, those and cat does, but those, the proper rotation to step up and, and, and contest a shot at the rim or contest a pass into the paint. And I like, who knows It's two games it's summer league. I don't know that Leonard Miller is always going to do the right thing there. Like we, there were a couple of instances where he did the wrong thing. Like there were a couple of opportunities where he fouled somebody in an, and one, and, and he just like, acted as if he didn't commit a foul when clearly he, I mean, one of them was a bad call, I guess, but on the other one, at least like, you know, wrap the guy up. Don't let him get the end one. Uh, you know, there's some things like that. Like, again, he's 19. There's going to be mistakes, but the defensive rotations to me seem so mature. And so um, like his head's just on a swivel defensively. It's very impressive. Uh, a good team defender in this game. He was jumping passing lanes. He had one really nice uh, steal in transition where he, jumped and, and uh, created a fast break the other way, right around the timeline. Like it was just really great timing. Um, not, I don't think he ever really got beat because he was being overly aggressive, jumping passing lanes. I think the, the, the spots that he picked were all very intelligent and just a well-rounded game. There's no other way to say it. A strong all around performance. Again, the defense to me was the most impressive, but he was strong offensively as well. Um, again, efficient, 7 to 15 shooting. That's almost 50%. Two of four outside the arc, four or five at the line, 20 points, five boards. You'd like to see him get a couple more boards because he led the team in minutes with 31. Uh, but summer league's weird that way. There's a lot more turnovers and, and um, you know, it feels like a lot more dunks and made shots. But uh, in general, very impressive performance from Leonard Miller. All right. I would say, I guess I'll also mention just if we're just talking like looking at lines and guys that, that impacted the stat sheet, I'll do this first. And then my last, the last segment, I want to get to the player that surprised me the most. We'll talk about Brandon Williams. He scored 20 plus 22, 24, whatever it was in game one on Friday. He had 17 points again in this one, six of 13 shooting O of three outside the arc, five of seven at the line, seven assists, two steals, no turnovers for Brandon Williams. He was really good. Um, he's impressed me. I, I, I know he like he's the guy. If you're not familiar, if you missed the the preview shows last week for summer league or didn't catch the games, uh, the backstory there is is he was an injured high school recruit. I think he played a little at University of Arizona, but left b actually before COVID. Bounced around a little bit, got in the G League, played uh, for the Portland Trailblazers the end of their season in 21 22 when they were completely tanking. He started like 17 games, played in 20 some games for them, and then played in the G League. I think for the Knicks last year. And did not get back to the NBA. He he's a high um, a high usage kind of low efficiency point guard, and he's a point guard. He's a little undersized. He's a good passer, good handle, but just kind of like a, a third guard who who wants to be kind of a bench scorer. And I was worried, like that's not really what the Wolves need in a backup point guard. But he was impressive in this game. Um, had a couple of nice isolation moves, some nice crossovers, a couple of really good passes. Again, seven assists, no turnovers, six of thirteen shooting. Uh, oh, three outside the arc, like the jumper needs some work still, but 17 and seven with two steals and no turnovers is a nice line. And I thought his feel for the game was very good. I liked him. I think it's pretty unlikely he's on the wolves. Perhaps he's an Iowa wolves uh, guard to be the straw that stirs the drink down there in an emergency kind of option. If the wolves, if something happens to McLaughlin or whatever, I think the wolves are pretty content with their backcourt the way it is. Uh, with Shake Milton as an option, and of course, to kill Alexander Walker, Anthony Edwards likely to initiate some offense with the second unit. But Brandon Williams is good in this game, and I've been impressed with him thus far in Summer League. All right, let's close the show with my number one most surprising player in this game, and then a couple other guys who I thought kind of jumped out at me watching this game. So we'll get to those guys here next. All right, so in addition to Josh Minot, Leonard Miller, and Brandon Williams, who jumped off the page to me in this game, number one for me was DJ Carton. And if you didn't watch the game, you glance at the box score, seven points, six assists is nice, but like he only shot two, the ball twice in 21 minutes. He actually led the bench unit in minutes in this game, and he was what? Actually, fourth overall in minutes played behind Miller, Minot, and Williams. DJ Carton really impressed me in this game. And quickly, his his backstory is he played a couple college years. If the name sounds familiar and you're a Minnesota basketball fan, he was at Ohio State for his freshman year, uh, 1920, the year that COVID uh, 
you know, there was no March Madness because of COVID, but he was good as a freshman, kind of a bench player with Ohio State, transferred to Marquette and was solid there, started 24 games in Marquette and then left, was in the G League the last two seasons, two seasons ago in the G League with the uh, the Hornets G League team, 10 and a half points per game, shot on 26% from three. Last year at the Iowa Wolves, though, 16 points per game in the regular season, 36 and a half percent from three, 53% from the floor. And he's kind of a combo guard. He's a little undersized to be a, tr- a two. He's like six, two, but he's a good passer. And some of his issues in the G league are high turnovers. Actually, those were issues in college for him too. Um, but I, I was really impressed with him in this game. Um, in general, I thought he was very, very good. Mostly it was just kind of like every time there was a play, you'd look up and it was DJ Carton. So like, you wouldn't even realize he had the ball in his hands and it was like, Oh man, that was, you know, whoever got this dunk, great pass. It was DJ Carton. And you go back and watch it, It's like, Oh, that was a really smart kind of play. He had a couple of hit ahead passes too. There was at least one hockey assist in there where it was just the right play. Um, the skill level on the passes was really good. He threw a nice lob at one point to Josh Minot. Um, and just was always in the right spot at the right time. He also had four steals and a couple of them were just straight pickpockets, just really opportunistic, intelligent plays, seven points, six assists, four steals, two rebounds, two of two shooting, got to the line five times was three of five and uh, only had a couple turnovers to those six assists. I don't know what his role is. Again, I don't think he's a solid enough passer to be a true NBA point guard. I don't think he's a good enough shooter to be a true NBA two guard. The Wolves already have, Luca Garza and the injured Jalen Clark on two-way deals. They have one two-way deal left to give. I'd be really surprised if DJ Carton got it, but he's one of like four guys on the Iowa Wolves that they asked to be on the summer league team. Clearly he's got fans in Minnesota. I like him a lot. He's a nice player. I I'm just a fan. Like I, I don't think there's a spot for him on the wolves, but it just, he's one of those guys. They just really pop when you watch him. Like, Hey, he feels like he could be an NBA caliber player, a bench energy guy, a little bit of that do stuff ability. I mean, if he's going to like, I don't know, he's going to get four steals a night. Like I'm, I guess the look at his steal rate in, in, uh, the G league, pretty good about 2% over two seasons of the G league. Like maybe, I mean, maybe there's, maybe there's more there, um, you know, than, than, than I thought initially, like I, I I'd keep an eye on DJ Carton and, and I'm curious to see how he plays the rest of this, uh, uh the summer league. Cause I thought he was very good. Um, for on hunt, another player I talked about last week as someone I was excited to watch, didn't get a ton of run in the first game. It really didn't in this game either. He had, actually he ended up playing 19 minutes. A lot of that was second half, but the, the line is very nice. 11 points, five rebounds, two assists, a couple of blocks. One of those, he absolutely just, stuffed a dunk attempt from Keon. I think it was Keontae George that went up and like Ferran Hunt met him at the apex and just completely stuffed the dunk attempt attempt, not at the rim, like above the rim hunt played in a couple of games last year for the Knicks had signed some 10 day deals. I think with new Orleans as well has an extensive G league uh, track record and resume, um, but also looked comfortable offensively had a nice dunk himself was five of seven at the line, three of five from the floor he is a possibility, I would think, uh, as a two-way uh, player. The Wolves have an injured guard in Jalen Clark. They have a big in Luka Garza. Maybe there's another wing that earns a two-way deal. For Ron Hunt, uh, he can go out there and guard anybody. And if he's going to show a little bit of improved uh, feel offensively, which he did in this game, that's an option. Another player who really surprised me, I didn't know anything about him, and I admitted as much last week on the show, other than the fact he played in, in Australia. Jalen Galloway only played five minutes in this game, uh, tied with Theo John for the least minutes of anyone that got into the game, only attempted one shot. It was a nice move to the basket, and he made it. Also had a nice pass. Played five minutes, was one of one shooting, had an assist, and had a block, too. I was impressed with Jalen Galloway. I know the Wolves lost the minutes he played by quite a bit. And like, I mean, who knows? He played in Australia last year, low minutes, young guy, but clearly long and athletic. The Wolves like something about him. And in those five minutes, I was impressed and I liked him quite a bit too. And I'm hoping he gets more run the rest of uh, of G League, because uh, G League, the rest of Summer League, because um, I thought he was fun to watch. Uh, other guys kind of did what you'd expect. Theo John was very quiet in his five minutes. Brandon Adams, I thought was nice, looked good. I don't know what his role is at the NBA level, but um, I mean, he's not somebody that, like he, he, 
he's a college. It was a, like a fifth year. He's the, he's the five-year college guy who didn't really score at all till his last year. Um, came up with, was suddenly able to shoot after not shooting well the first few years in college. He was three of three in this game, knocked down a couple of threes, including a really tough one. Um, tried to dunk over someone and got called for a charge. Like he was fun to watch. I, I don't think he's got an NBA role in him yet, but perhaps he's an Iowa Wolf. Brian Bowen did more Brian Bowen stuff. Looked the part. Um, I kind of the same deal, right? Like professional basketball player knows what he's doing. Nothing really stood out to me beyond that, but um, same with Javante cook. Actually, I thought he had a little bit of a rough game and Travion Williams, who I was excited to watch. Also, I thought a rough performance didn't have any assists, had a couple turnovers, missed a couple at the rim, had it badly missed a three pointer. Um, he's going to keep getting minutes because he is uh, the wolves only have a couple centers on this roster and they need a big down there. Um, but you know, you expect more out of Travion Williams here in the next couple of games. All right. Um, that's all I have on this one. Just really impressive by Minot Miller and uh, DJ Carton. Brandon Williams, nice game for Ron Hunt. Good game. Um, that's kind of my my takeaways. On Wednesday show, I'll, I think I'll probably open by talking a little bit about um, so far, what do we know? Like, what have we learned so far in G League? Or, I, mean, I keep calling it G League. Summer League play in, in Vegas for the Wolves. And then uh, we'll play the conversation I had with Kane over at Lockdown Bucks and uh, the conversation we had about Malik Beasley and Mike Conley and the Wolves in general. Uh, so we'll play that on Wednesday's show. And then, of course, the rest of the week, we'll talk more Summer League. So big week upcoming. We are still daily Monday through Friday. Big thank you to those of you that do make Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, you can listen anywhere. You can watch on YouTube. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. If you haven't downloaded yet, please do. You can also follow on Twitter at Lockdown T Wolves and at B Beacon. That's with two B's, two E's, C-K-E-N. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. The Lockdown Podcast Network is your local experts on the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.